Hello Jason. Hey, this is my uh, power station uh, setup. I know there's some uh, pretty fancy uh, power stations out on the market now, but I ended up building these uh, battery packs right here before a lot of that was available and the prices have come down. This is actually a 100 amp hour Battleborn and that is a 50 amp hour Battleborn. And I just wanted to be able to put all this stuff together in a uh, in a cabinet for storage and then it makes it easy to hook it all together uh, in, a, in a power outage situation. So this is a really cool design Jeff. It's really portable and it looks like a really simple setup. Maybe you can break down the three main components that you need in a backup system like this. The battery of course is the main item. Then I have on this middle shelf is a, is a 1000 watt inverter. And then I've got two different uh, types of uh, chargers here. One the solar charge controller and then this for uh, the times when I just need to charge off the AC uh, power. Uh, I made the cabinet to house all this stuff. The cabinet was an afterthought. I already had all these components. None of them are bolted in here. It's just like a storage place but it actually serves a good purpose to keep everything kind of consolidated and, uh, and, and close together. Uh, with cast wheels on here, easy to roll around. Jeff, do you want to tell me a little bit more about both these batteries? This was my uh, first one. It's the uh, Battleborn 100 amp hour battery. I bought it because I wanted a, a lithium iron phosphate battery. They were becoming real popular. The ones on uh, Amazon that you see nowadays weren't, weren't really available when I bought this several years ago. So I knew Battleborn was a good name and that's why I went with it. But I wanted to know how am I going to connect everything up? And uh, I actually made this case integrated with the uh, battery itself. And uh, so I just kind of surrounded the battery with a, um, a, a cradle that's a top and a bottom. Um, I used threaded um, rod to uh, hold the two pieces together with the nuts on here to give it the right spacing, one at the very uh, back. And for a handle, I'm just using the um, connection point that the strap hold down for the battery itself. So I can just pick this thing up and carry it around like so. For the uh, faceplate here, provides all my uh, connection points. And this is just a, a piece of wood that has got all these things connected. Um, so really pretty uh, simple way to make a connection to a battery and have accessibility to the common connection, 12 volt connection points that we, that most appliances use. This is a, a 50 amp hour Battleborn battery. And the problem with buying just a separate battery is that you got to have a way to connect everything up. And my favorite connection is the uh, Anderson power pole. Uh, I also have a SAE right here, but you notice I didn't even put a bother to put a cigarette lighter plug on it. I just don't like those. And a couple of meters, some uh, instrumentation amplifier for my uh, voltage and, and current meters. I, uh, I fused everything with uh, a fuse block with uh, the ATO uh, fuses. And um, uh, just really a simple uh, power station, no inverter no charge controller, just the battery with, uh, with uh, connection points. To uh, carry this uh, battery around, I, I've got a couple of uh, spring-loaded uh, handles on the side. I thought that was probably the easiest thing to do for something this small. The, uh, the inverter sits in this middle shelf, and um, it is a Cooper Busman 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. As you can see, it's pretty big, but I think the quality is really good and the price was really is nice. In fact, you could pick these up for $115 and for a thousand watt pure sine wave uh, with a you know, well-known uh, brand, Cooper Busman, I thought, what the heck? But it is big and kind of bulky. Um, I already had it, so I'm going to use it. I made a cable quite a while ago that was fairly short, it's four gauge wire. It's got the Anderson SB50 um, power pole connection, connector on it. Uh, matches up with uh, the one on my uh, battery here. Uh, 
and that thing just plugs in right here. That's one way of connecting it. The other way uh, to connect it is with a cable that comes off of my solar charge controller. And we take that out and we plug this guy in. This is the solar charge controller. I'm going to actually set that on the uh, top here. That way I have uh, the display uh, easy to see and what's going on. But that now steals the port where my inverter goes. So we've got this little pigtail and we can plug the inverter in right here. So now we've got the inverter and the solar charge controller. This thing can actually just go back in the cabinet here. So now I can just keep everything together in this uh, cabinet. That frees me up from having to parallel a couple of my regular Anderson power pole connections here, which would take away from the ability to run other things that I may want to run DC. So. You also have a way to charge up your battery. So you want to talk about the two chargers that you have here on the top? Well, anybody that has a portable power station is definitely going to want to try to charge that with solar. So this is a, a solar charge controller by Epever. And those that are familiar with Epever, Epever probably have seen these before, but maybe not in this, this blue uh, uh, bezel. This is the, a newer uh, XDS2 display with three rows, which is the reason why I chose this one over the standard Epever. I think the electronics are pretty much the same thing. but So this one is 40 amps and 520 watts capability. And they're inexpensive, around 130 bucks. Uh, it was just what I chose. I've got the uh, Kase uh, DMT 1250 and also a, a Blue Sky charger like, like you do, Jason, but uh, I thought it would go good with this setup. I do have three connections for uh, solar panels. Um, this is rated 100 volts, so I may want to series and get my voltage up a little higher just so I have less uh, voltage loss in the, the wiring. Then there is this uh, charger which is meant to be hardwired into a system I couldn't resist I picked these up for half price I don't know that this is the ideal uh, AC charger to get but I don't think it really matters uh, anyhow this is a Kase AC 1220 uh, 20 amp uh, which might be a little bit low for for these batteries you could go higher but the price was really good for me and I'm kind of a sucker for bargains. It is programmable in 5, 10, 15, 20 amp increments. For this setup, I just leave it at 20 amps all the time. It's got a built-in fan, so it won't overheat. Jeff, can you give everyone just a brief overview of the construction of your cabinet here? The dimensions, of course, are, are uh, such that it would fit these two batteries down there. Just a little bit of uh, space right there. Uh, this wood is not painted. This is an afterthought. I uh, just had two, uh, two compartments. And I felt like this cabinet could be used for something other than just this. If I ever, down the road, change my power station uh, mode of operation, I, I may just want to take everything out and just use this, this little cabinet. The, um, the wheels on the bottom, the caster wheels, came from my projector TV uh, that I threw away a long time ago. My first HD TV and saw those wheels on there and I thought, hey, these might could be useful sometime and that, that time finally came about. I just used half inch uh, plywood. This is actually a maple slash um, birch. And I wanted something to have knots on it. It's kind of expensive, but I did put me some trim on the front that helps to make it strong. Half inch isn't really strong, but the fact that I do have this molding around the front, that helps strengthen it a little bit. And then I got screws on on both the the ends here to hold it together. And it seems to be really strong, strong enough I should say. And then on the back I've got some 3 16 inch um, uh, hardboard, also called masonite. And I've got a lot of uh, screws holding that together and that also provides uh, strength to the, the cabinet. So. It rolls around real easy. The cabinet itself, without anything in it, is pretty lightweight. It, it fits in my uh, closet, in my workroom, uh, until I need it. So Jeff, now that you got this all put together, uh, what would be your main use case for this during a power outage? 
it's normally stored down in my basement and I would probably end up having to take the components out so that I could carry it upstairs and set it up like you see right here. My main intent is to power the refrigerators if it's in the summertime. If it's in the wintertime, I think I can put the food in coolers or whatever, bring it outside because we're in a, in a, a zone that uh, has snow. But summertime is probably the most critical, trying to keep your food from spoiling. And um, I would try to power my AC fridge uh, that's in my kitchen. But if it draws the power down too much on this battery, which I'm, I'm afraid it would if I'm not getting enough solar. And then there's nighttime also. I, I, I feel like I'd probably lose ground uh, over a number of days. So I probably want to then power uh, a smaller AC fridge that I have and the freezer that's in the basement which uh, is smaller than my kitchen refrigerator and try to consolidate my food such that I wouldn't have to power as many devices but it would be primarily to power the refrigeration the best I could and uh, possibly a computer the internet so that I if, if it's a power outage I want to know what's going on you know if it's a disaster somewhere I kind of want to be up to date on the on the news but uh, if it's in the winter time, I, I do have the ability to power my, my uh, furnace and, um, and that only needs to be connected a couple times to just take the chill off the house. So if it was an extended outage and you didn't want to run your full size, or you're saying that this may not you know, power a full size refrigerator for a long period of time, you do have a, quite a few DC powered fridges. How long would this work with DC powered fridges? Uh, probably indefinitely, uh, provided I have a few solar panels out and we're got, we don't have cloudy skies all the time. I, I could power, I think, two good sized DC fridges such as the Iceco VL74 and, and one other one. I think I could power that no problem at all. So one other thing too, uh, Jason, that I've got that, um, is I've got two small inverter generators. I've got a Yamaha, uh, 1000 watt and a 2000 watt, the 2000 watt. It's also got a propane uh, conversion kit on it, and I've got several propane tanks. So in a, in a long-term power outage, it's going to be a matter of balancing uh, the solar, getting as much solar as I can, uh, complementing that with the uh, generator. Maybe the generator, uh, if I have to run the generator, maybe I, I just charge these batteries up as, as high as I, you know, with as much current as I can put into them. Uh, when they're running, might as well take advantage of the generator. So I, so I do have other means to to uh, uh, help with a, a long-term power outage. Well, thanks, Jeff, for explaining this. Uh, you know your DIY power station here. Uh, really appreciate you going over the details. Um, now I have to ask you: Say you didn't have any of this stuff, would you go the DIY route again and do all this, or would you go with an actual power station? Kind of maybe. Give me your thoughts on both of those. Well, I think that uh, depends on the person and their skill set. If they are, if they have electrical background um, and uh, maybe woodworking tools, you can notice I use a lot of wood here. It, it really depends on on the skill set of the person involved. Uh, there is nothing wrong with either one. The uh, the DIY route allows maybe a little more flexibility. You can choose the individual components, the size of the inverter. Uh, you can choose the uh, the charge controller um, and the batteries. But there is prob there's definitely more work in going this route than just buying a uh, uh, a thousand watt uh, power station uh, that's in the over a thousand dollars. Uh, this isn't cheap either. Those Battleborn batteries are, are not cheap, but there are some less expensive ones for DIY. Would I do it? Would I do this over again? Uh, that's a good question because you really don't know how difficult it is until after you do it. And then uh, you might think twice about it. I, I really do like the, the new power stations that, are, that uh, you've uh, reviewed on, on YouTube. Those are pretty neat and that's very enticing just to have one single unit all in, all in one, one case. But, this was the route that I went uh, because I actually had bought some of these components uh, before those other the power stations were really available. You know, I think one of the biggest benefits to a DIY setup is the fact that if something breaks or if you want to upgrade something, it's just an easy swap. You could perhaps even sell the component that you're not using anymore to so get a little bit of money back. So you do have the upgradability of a DIY setup or the expandability 
So you're right, there are definitely benefits to, uh, to each option, whether you go with a power station or a DIY project like this. The uh, batteries are pretty reliable, and so uh, the, the weak link in those power stations is, is going to be the electronics in there, uh, the, uh, the circuit control, the charge controller, the inverter. Those things are going to be uh, are going to go possibly go bad before the battery actually goes bad. Uh, in this in this down here, the battery is the most expensive thing, and that's probably the most reliable uh, item in here. If the inverter goes bad, I'm not out very much money. You know, just buy another inverter. Same with the uh, the solar charge controllers. I'm not out very much money if I if I have to replace those. But if something goes bad in a, one of those expensive power stations, I don't know. Well, what do you do to fix those? I'm not trying to badmouth those. I'm just saying that, that you know, there's, there's pros and cons to going both routes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jeff, for being on another video, showing us this awesome setup. It's super simple. And like he explained today, you know, you can choose any type of battery, any type of inverter and charger and put it in a cabinet like this. So anyways, if you guys have any questions for me or Jeff, throw a comment down below. And uh, thank you again, Jeff. We really appreciate you uh, doing a video on the channel again. You're welcome.